Hey what's up guys, Chris Cohen here and welcome to another Creative Visuals tutorial. And some of you thought I would never say that again. Come on guys, you should know me better. Now, today is super exciting guys because we're gonna tackle one of my most famous effects and actually it's one of, of the effects that I won my first Film Riot Monday challenge and I got over 100 subscribers. It sounds crazy today, but back then it was really cool. This effect has come a long way since then, and you guys have seen it featured in Paragon as well as other VFX concepts. And finally, I'm gonna show you guys how you can pull it off. Another exciting thing, guys, is that I have an awesome creative challenge for you, brought to you by Wondershare, who has also sponsored today's tutorial. Wondershare has launched a campaign called 21 Ways to Express Yourself, and it's a really awesome creative challenge where you go and you can make a video, a photo, an illustration, anything goes based on 21 prompts from today all the way to April 11th. For those of you that don't know who Wondershare is, there are some awesome people that create software for video, photo, and much more. And they're actually the creators of Filmora, which I featured before on the channel, as a very good beginners or like intermediate video editing software. Now about this challenge, guys, like I said, you have 21 prompts. Let's take, for example, the heroic kind of like prompt. And you can create a video, a photo, anything with that kind of like subject. And who knows, maybe you can use today's tutorial VFX to pull it off. Click the link in my description, guys, to take you over to see all the details. But basically, from today all the way to April 11th, you need to create and submit your posts either on YouTube, Instagram, or Twitter and use hashtag Wondershare Challenge. Let's get back to today's visual effect. As always, guys, the project files are going to be included and updated to the Creatrix Vault and it's going to feature one of the eyes design. You can also find the full pack on the Creatrix Store featuring five distinct eye models with some sick sound effects to go with them. Basically, everything that you're going to need to pull the effect as you saw it in the preview. So with that said, let's fire up After Effects and let's get started. Okay guys, so here we are within After Effects and I have the eyes pack ready to go. We're gonna be working on the Cyberpunk eye design number one. As you guys can see, we have five awesome designs with SFX to go in the eyes pack. So this one, as you guys can see, is this kind of like blue one and it was featured in the Paragon short film actually. So this is how your composition will look at the end, but don't worry, we're gonna take it step by step. So the first thing that you need is obviously to have some form of like footage to work with. So I'm gonna drag it into a new composition over here, guys. And we're gonna find the beginning. This is pre-rendered with the visual effects of the background and everything. So we're gonna go right about here. We're gonna trim this down and we're gonna go up to this one so some things you should always kind of like be in the lookout for is how to film things now these eyes are really cool for uh, the following effect first of all we're gonna if i zoom in here 100 percent you can see we have a very realistic rendition of light and the reflections of the eye but also we have this very cool kind of like shadow fall off based on how the eyes move and also you can see here that the eyes are like very realistic in the sense that they are embedded in the eyeball itself so it doesn't look flat and because of the curvature of the eye and the way the eyes move even though they're technically 2d effects with some very cool tricks applied to them they look it actually really looks like the character is looking that way versus looking at us. And because the eyes move independently to the face, obviously you can look a bit that way or you can look more towards the camera. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to like basically map out the eye using tracking. And because the eyes have that kind of like movement to them, 
it looks really realistic and when you combine everything which is the animation of the eyes as well as sound and everything that's going on on screen it looks really sick so the first thing that we need to do is track our eye now we need we have two eyes uh, as it usually goes most of the time so for the best results you need to track each eye individually so i'm going to show you how to track one eye and then we're just going to copy the null objects from this composition because they're ready to go i'm actually you know what if i delete this and go here i'm going to duplicate uh, my composition here open it in a new one well that didn't work go back go back so we have cyberpunk let me delete this one it should be the comp that i need to duplicate yeah here we go so i'm going to pre-compose this again this way we're going to have the exact same clip working as the promo and that way nothing is going to be weird in terms of tracking so what i want to do is go to the point to the frame that the eyes open and here we can see if i go right in there you can see that we don't really see the eyes yet so it's not really worth it to have anything in this frame sometimes the camera might have captured the eyes opening in between and in that case you should map out and mask out the effect to show through but here we're lucky because this one this is not really a frame worth doing but this one is where everything starts so i'm going to split the layer by hitting ctrl shift d and now i'm going to right click track and stabilize and then track motion now the cool thing is we can use a simple track just one point but the most important thing is that we need to place the tracker to cover the iris of the eye and that is the whole iris of the eye the outside kind of like you know um, square dictates where within that kind of like area it's going to search for the effect but now because like we said at the beginning the iris moves independently to the to the face and to everything we specifically need to track the iris if you track this point or this point it's not going to work so once you selected your area to track the iris and you've set all of your parameters and you're at the beginning frame or at the end frame just to make things easier i'm going to play, press play forward and what after effects is going to do is going to go through the clip and as you can see is going to flawlessly track the iris so when there is a micro movement let's say when you look at someone and you move from one eye to the other eye even that micro movement is going to be perfectly translated to uh to our effect and that way it's going to really help with the realism of the effect so if we go here you know what's funny if i go back to a hundred percent here I've noticed that like uh, probably After Effects buffs out a few frames because it will go relatively fast. I mean, this is 4K and then it will kind of like stop. It's like the buffer of the camera. So if you press stop and then continue tracking, it goes way faster for some reason, which I'm not sure why, but that's cool, I guess. So we're almost done here. And once the track is done, what you want to do is create a null object. And a null object is used to basically map out the tracking data to that object. And then everything we create are going to be linked to that set null. And that way, everything is going to be tracked and ready to go. So a few frames left and we're done. Now, for uh, being a bit faster, if you hit Control, Alt, Shift and Y, it creates a null layer. Edit target, null 5, OK, and hit Apply okay again so now if i go back at the beginning the first frame you can see this is a null and this is our tracking data and as we scroll through the null perfectly sits on the eye which is exactly what we want so now on to the cool stuff i will open my eye design one from the ice pack and i'm gonna start with the eye itself actually i'm just gonna drag it right in Take it back to the beginning. So this is how the eye looks at the beginning. It makes no sense, right? But don't worry, guys. The important thing is to have a really cool eye design and then knowing the tricks of how to compose it in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, close this for now, zoom back in and explain to you how we create this really sick and realistic kind of like 
fall off with the shadow and everything which is pretty sick in my opinion so I'm gonna create a new a new layer with, which is black and we want black and I'm gonna close it for now and I'm gonna zoom in really close to the eye and I'm gonna map out the area of just the, the eye and that is the white part right done I'm gonna adjust it a bit just to make sure and this is a perfect kind of like mask right I'm gonna press M on the keyboard and actually press double M and this is all of our masks properties now what you want to do is link that new layer and mask to your null this way as we scroll through the mask is following perfectly our eye but as you can see we have a second thing we need to solve which is basically our eyes do not stay the same which is awesome because that's what makes the effect look realistic that kind of like constant change so what we need to do now is go here to the mask properties and keyframe the mask path and as we move through what you need to do every few frames you don't have to be really that detailed all you have to do is basically scroll through go to like a big move there let's say and adjust your frame adjust your mask basically and as you adjust your mask after Effects is going to animate that mask to go. Now you can go in between and kind of adjust it and make the timing perfect. But as you go through your entire clip, you will animate that mask, creating new kind of like uh, notes. And then as you go through, After Effects is going to have all the animation down. So just to save time, now that I guys showed you how to do it, it's just a tedious task of going through it. I'm going to go back at the beginning and simply copy paste. A mask you can see and link this to our new null because this is a different composition and I zoom back in and you can always just hide the null so you don't see it always you can see that as I scroll through I've animated the mask to follow the eye and if I hit M you can see it's not that many points like keyframes it's really not that many and it follows it perfectly so now we have a map for where the effects can take place, which is pretty sick. So if I hit double M again, this is my feathering values. Now we're feathering things in order to gradually, uh, so we don't have like sharp edges when it comes to VFX composition. Now you can copy this, but usually depends on the distance, how close up, the resolution and many things. So always play around with mask feathering and mask expansion, which this in this way is like negative, is like inwards and find the perfect kind of like balance between a feather and the mask itself. So now, if I open the eye again, I can make it follow just that mask by hitting alpha mat. And you can't see it now, but if I make it small, let's say 50, you can see now that the effect only takes place within the eye. So hopefully you can see where we're going with this. So I'm gonna center the eye to the iris and then hit S and go to something, let's say like five. So if I zoom in here to 200%, you can see that now we're covering the eye perfectly. So if I go back to the beginning and hit the same thing and go like 200% and hit S, we can see my perfect value was 4.8. So if I go here and hit 4.8 and I'm just copying values to save time and we do the exact same effect. Now we have the eye and I'm going to link this to the null as well. So now as we scroll through, the eye stays perfectly tracked with pretty sick. So now we're going to start composing that eye and showing you the tricks and tips of how to make them look realistic. So the first thing is that the eye is too sharp. It looks fake because it's too sharp. So if you go to effects, blur and sharpen and hit fast box blur, you get edges and hit something like say five. You can see if we go back, I'm actually going to do it. So more so you can see so this is zero everything is very harsh you can see pixels and everything let's go to something like 20. you can see now that we're starting to match the blurriness of the image to our vfx and that's what makes it sick now because the eye pack is designed with alpha transparency you can see we already see the reflections are passing through the eye and everything but you can always play around with something let's say screen just to see if it makes any difference and this one doesn't if you put add it makes a small difference here but i'm gonna leave it to normal and that would be it so now 
we have our basis, which is basically the eye. So all I have to do now, that all the hard, kind of tedious work is done, is keep bringing in an element. So from the eye, I'm going to move on to the iris. If I go back up, you can put this one on screen because it has pre-made glow effects. I'm going to hit S, do the same thing, go to something like 5 or 4, zoom in there and put it right where the center of the iris is, which is right about there, let's say. I'm going to duplicate my, my mask guide and put alpha mat and then link my iris to the null. Right there. So now let's change the scale to something like five so we can see. Oh. Now you can see what we're working with. And because of that mask, you can see that the iris and everything has that realistic fall off based on the shadow, which is really, really cool. Now the thing is, this one has the same problem. It's too sharp. So you can always copy your uh, effect and in this one, for example, it's too much. Now it's too blurred. So let's go to something like 10. 10 looks kind of nice. You do need some separation. Let's say the iris is more like focused, the other elements are less focused, and this creates kind of like a 3D effect because of the depth. Another cool thing that you can do now that uh, everything is pre-made with clothes and everything is use colorization. If you use Video Copilot's amazing free plugin, Color Vibrance, uh, you can just colorize the iris to how you like it. So I can go for like a cool kind of like blue here. And if we zoom out, you can see where this is going. Now, the other cool thing uh, that I came up with back in the day was a way to have that kind of like very cool Deus Ex kind of like surgical lines within the eyeball itself. And it's this ones. Now, I've pre-made this as well. So all you have to do is go to the surgical ring, come over here and drop it right in. If we change it back to something like five again, and bring it right in. This one's a bit too small. Let's go 5.5 and kind of like 5.3. As you can see, guys, these are very high res and this is a 4K comp. So technically, you can use this in so many um, situations without having to like upscale because they're so big and eyes usually do not take an entire 4K frame. Now, as you guys have noticed by now, we link it to the null in order to be tracked, we duplicate the mask, and then we set it to follow that mask. Same problems apply. We need to apply a blur effect because it's just too much. But before we do that, I wanna show you another cool thing. So this is my mask now. I like to put two of them, one in the iris and one in the outer kind of like white part. The cool thing is that this is adjustable. If I double click it, and I go to my mask properties, I can always change the expansions and make it really fit the scene, which is really cool. Now, another cool thing is if you hit right click and you go to layer styles, you can find bevel and emboss. And then you can open bevel and emboss and go to outer bevel or like emboss and play around. Now, usually I put emboss and it doesn't look right right now, but if you switch it to up to down, you can see now uh, that we have a realistic indentation within the eye itself, and it creates this realistic light fall off right here, as if the eye is screwed in because it's cybernetic, basically. So you can always play with the size, how big or how small you want it. You can always play with the depth as well as the direction of the light. So if the light comes from like up here, you can switch this line, this white part to be here. And then that's how you make it really realistic. And once I apply the blur effect again, we smooth everything out. And that is it basically. All I have to do now is duplicate it, change its size to something, let's say seven. And as you can see now, I have another uh, eye uh, kind of like surgical line ready to go and you can also hit T play with the opacity a bit to make it softer and you're good to go everything is tracked everything is pre-made for you you have nothing else to do in, ter in, in terms of like composing the effects in I'm actually going to go to the eye and put it to like 15 another cool thing about the eye design is that if you click here where you can see the lettering ring 
all you have to do is adjust your text and the letters are gonna go so you can write whatever you want in the eye with Sprisic as well so now if I scroll through guys you can see how nice the eye looks but we're not done yet as you can see there's only one thing missing and that is the animation of the eye so for this one I'm actually gonna jump into our pre-made composition and we have both eyes here that's why this looks like this basically this is the right eye and this is the left eye but I hope now that I've showed you kind of like the progression of building up the effect it doesn't look that crazy it's actually quite straightforward so now I always play with the iris and the eye so basically I play with this too so if I go here I always like to animate the eye and the iris and there is a few animation parameters to consider one is rotation how the eye the elements rotate and it's always to rotate them inversely so if this if the eye rotates kind of like right clockwise the iris should animate uh, rotate counterclockwise this kind of like reverse animation really makes it look cool and kind of like detailed because of the comp complexity of the move and another thing you can always adjust is the scale so as human eyes have the iris and it contracts and retracts in itself be depends on like the light uh, the light conditions we can use the same thing but to show emotion as you saw guys in paragon uh, with the cyborg girl character we i really used the iris animation and the scale of it to uh, showcase emotion so when she was kind of like in more like you know attack mode they would become very small precise and even the color would change or they can become very soft and kind of like move in a very slow pace to indicate that nothing crazy is happening so fast and kind of like aggressive moves in terms of animation can showcase aggression or like something is happening and soft and kind of like mellow movements can showcase calm which i think is really cool so if i hit u on the keyboard on both of these well not this one actually yes this one you can see my animation keyframes and we can have one in scale one rotation i also have opacity because at the end you can bring them the elements in and out and create even more of a cool effect which i think is really sick as you guys can see right there so now we have the surgical rings as well as the iris but the inner elements uh, are not there so as you can see there's so many kind of like combinations and things that you can pull off to make them look really cool now i'm gonna go back here and as and i'm gonna explain to you the process of animation basically as the eyes glow open whether they open for the first time after sleep, let's say, or there is a blink happening. I always like to have a, a really cool move. So basically, I take the iris, if we focus here, and we take it from like, let's say, 5% scale. I take it all the way to 10% scale, when the full motion of the eye is done. And then gradually, I bring it back down to something like 7.5. And when at the end, uh, the kind of like character goes in like attack mode I go to like that 7.5 to a very aggressive and very fast kind of like small and precise pinhole and throughout all of this as you can see if you focus on the rotation the rotation changes it goes to plus 183 then it goes back to minus 86 and it's animated very softly and as you can see here guys if you focus on the eye itself you can see that reverse kind of like animation in terms of rotation that i talked about and once you log your animation in one eye all you have to do is duplicate and just put them there which is really sick as well so that is the basics of animation basically you hit r to control the rotation and you select keyframes so here for example if i go here i can go even more excessive you know it's up to you you really have to spend some time and figure out what looks good how much animation is good and take it from there based also on what the character does uh, now that that's done all you have to do is toggle the switch 
in order for us to see oh come on taspa okay let's see if i can do this guys yay congrats chris so you need to enable motion blur and then hit this because as the eyes move as you guys can see here we have this really cool motion blur effect which really sells it as well so if i turn it off you can see it's it's just the blur effect that we had introduced before and again you can see the very nice reflections going through and everything but if i turn it on you can see we have this really nice and cool realistic motion of that blur uh, as if it's been filmed let's say so that is basically it guys and it, quite a few things to go through so you probably will have to watch this one or two times and go to the specific stages and have a look again when it comes to the ice pack there is a pre-comp made where the eyes are already composed in so you can play around and kind of like see the feather values the blur effects and things like this and then spending time to animate one element and again it's not that many it's the iris and the eye design that you have to uh, animate it's only two things uh, and its eye design has its own elements but again they always go are going to be two one is the eye and one is the iris so if you guys go through the tutorial and here kind of like my points uh, again when it comes to rotation scale and things like this and then study the effect in terms of playback i'm sure you're gonna get it okay guys so that's a wrap i hope you enjoyed the tutorial and you learned something make sure to check the description for the wondershare challenge as well as for the creatix vault when it comes to the project files or even better the full cyberpunk is kit on the creatix store I'll catch you guys on the next episode, which is going to be a filmmaker reacts, and we'll take it from there. And yes, there's going to be another tutorial at some point. Don't worry, guys. I got you. Stay creative and awesome.